Welcome back. In the previous step, we populated some data into our table person. In this step, we will start with writing our Spring JDBC stuff. This is stuff you are looking forward to from a long time, isn't it? Let's get started with it right now. So let's create a new class as usual. So I'll call this new class and what we would want to do is we would want to get the details of person. So this is a person DAO and I would at a later point use JPA to get the same details. So I'll call this person JDBC DAO. So, and I'll use the package database demo dot JDBC. So the package is dot JDBC, the name of the class is person JDBC DAO. And let's say finish. Now we have a simple class person JDBC DAO. What does this do? This talks to the database gets values from there. What should I use? Repository. Repository is the right one. I could have called this component. It would not make different, any difference as far as this specific example goes, but it's always good to use the right annotation. And the right annotation in this specific situation is at repository. It talks to the database. So it's a repository. Now over here, I would want to create a simple method. I would want to be able to get the details of all the to-dos. So I would want to do a select star from that table. So what I would want to do is I would want to do a select star from person table. I would want to do a select star from person and I would want to be able to return all the values of person. I would want to be able to print the values of the person. So how do I write a query for that? So the return type would be list of person. So that's cool. And I would want to call this method find all. And inside the method, we would want to be able to talk to the database. So how do we talk to the database? Typically, if you're using normal JDBC, you would use a database connection. So you'd create a connection to the database and use it. But we are using Spring. So we would want Spring to give, us, give the database connection to us. How do we do that? The way we can do that is use something called JDBC template. If you're using Spring, then you have to use JDBC template to execute a query. So JDBC template, I'll do an import JDBC template and I would want Spring to auto wire it in. I'll auto wire a JDBC template. We'll talk a little bit more about JDBC template a little later. For now, let's get the example running. So JDBC template dot, I'd want to execute a query, right? So I would want to execute a query and the query I would want to execute is select star from person. And where do I want to map it to? The person bean. Thing is, we have not really defined a person bean yet, right? So let's go ahead and quickly define a person bean with exactly the same names as we created the table. So I'll say control one, create class person. I would want to use a different package. So I'll say database, database demo dot bean or you might even call this entity. When we talk about JPA, you will understand what an entity is. But for now, let's not really worry about it. So the fields I would want in here are private, int, id. That's the id field. The other one I would want is private string name, private string location, and we have private date, birth date input the java.util.date. Let's also create a few constructors so that it's very easy for us to do stuff. So right click source generate constructor and choose all the fields. And I'll also create the getters and setters for these fields as well. So the same thing, right click source generate getters and setters, select all and create it out. So we now have a person bean which is present and now I can use the person bean in here. So the person bean is now available in here. Oops, what's the problem? Okay, this is cool. Now, I would need to now map whatever data is coming from here to the person bean. When the query is executed, you get something called a result set back. From that result set, I would need to map it to the person. How do I do that? In Spring, there is, in Spring JDBC actually, there is a mapper. There is an automatic mapper which can be used when the column names match. So this ID 
maps to the ID field in the database, name maps to name, location maps to location, and birth date maps to birth underscore date. So this is exact mapping. So we don't really need to define a row mapper or something like that. We'll look at what is a row mapper and other stuff a little later. For now, we would use the default row mapper, which is provided by Spring. It's called bean property row mapper. Control space. I would want to import it in and the bean is person dot class. And I would want to return this back. Let's organize the code a little bit better. This is clean, I guess. Now I can see all the code in my screen. Oops, this is not fine. I'll just need to press and enter. Okay, this is cool. I can see that I would, I'm getting the select star from person. I'm using a row mapper. In this step, what we did was we created a simple repository, person JDBC DAO. We use JDBC template to fire a query. We are using a bean property row mapper on the person class to map the results out and we are returning a list of person back. In the next step, we will execute this query and see if it's working fine. Until then, bye-bye.